good afternoon everybody and after a very long marathon uh, <coughs> detailed presentation by Mina Saab on land survey I'll uh, talk about uh, forest survey so <laughs> of course uh, I'll try to uh, be brief to, uh, because I believe there's a panel discussion of one and a half hours after this so uh, let's see let's see how it goes um, I always start with this uh, quote which you can see by, our, uh, by Dr. Rajinder Prasad who states that I wonder if there is any other natural resource which gives us so much and of which we know so little, that is the forest. I uh, would just give you a brief overview of the organization I head and of course uh, I was told to speak on the use of geomatics in uh, forest management and of course uh, some thoughts. Forest Survey of India, as you can see, is a national level organization under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And the primary task is obviously to undertake the forest resource assessment of the country at the national level. And uh, we are in service of the nation since 1965. Uh, in 19, just brief history, uh, this organization earlier in 1965 was known as Pre-Investment Survey of Forest Resources. So it, you know, it was a very small project-based uh, um, set up at that time, FAO, UNDP, Government of India project, primarily to look into areas where, you know, there's a possibility of setting up wood-based industries at that time. I'm talking of early 65 and early 70s, uh, early 60s. But, uh, you know, it was felt in the National uh, Commission of Agriculture report that this small uh, unit, uh, the PASFR, should be given a national mandate. And with this idea, the Forest of India, as you see today, was created in 1981. And the mandate of Forest of India came into existence in 1986. And the primary mandate, as uh, it's uh, uh, visible out here, is actually to do the forest cover mapping and uh, report it every two years. So we have the India State of Forest Report, which we publish every two years. The latest India State of Forest Report was published in 2015. We do a lot of inventory of forests and trees outside the forest areas. We impart training to forestry personnel in modern forest survey and uh, inventory techniques. We support and oversee the states, which they are our primary stakeholders. And also we take up a lot of project-based activities of the State Forest Department and Central Government. Uh, our headquarters is based at Dehradun, and of course I have four regional offices catering to different parts of the country, at Shimla uh, for the Northern Zone, uh, Bangalore for the Central Zone, Calcutta for the Southern Zone, uh, for the Eastern Zone, and um, uh, we have uh, Nagpur for the Central Zone. Now, this is the uh, primary work which we do. In this slide you can see the main core competence of this organization obviously is on remote sensing based mapping of forest resources and, and inventory because inventory is the backbone of this organization. Uh, as I've mentioned, we do a lot of state of forest reports. We have a repository of data on forest resources. We have a time series data on forest cover. We are working, doing a lot of work on forest fire monitoring uh, for the last 12 years now, since 2004. We're doing a lot of work in carbon assessment, <coughs> uh, which we report for the UNFCCC through the ministry. FSI is the main nodal agency. We impart a lot of training, as I mentioned. We have a large number of thematic maps. And we have also into a lot of web application designing on different applications of decision support systems and eGreen Watch, which I'll just briefly mention. I was told to uh, speak on, as I've mentioned before, use of geomatics in Forest of India or basically in forestry management. So I've listed a couple of them and uh, speak something on, uh, on, on each of these uh, areas on forest cover mapping, preparation of the forest management plans, on inventory, on fire monitoring. Then some, how do you assess damage due to disasters, e-green watch, decision support system. And very recently, we now uh, we are also into application of the very high resolution data. Sorry. Uh, the forest cover mapping, of course, has, you know, is again, uh, we've been carrying out this activity since 1987 onwards. And every two years, we publish the, the State of Forest Report, which many of you may be aware of. And uh, <coughs> uh, 
we have obviously we take the imagery, the satellite images from the National Remote Sensing Center. Uh, the topo sheets are the survey window topo sheets which we use. We do a lot of interpretation uh, uh, followed by a lot of ground truthing, and then we produce the classified maps, which are again verified by the state forest departments. And final classified maps are uh, produced, which gives you the information of forest cover state-wise and then district-wise. Okay, and uh, over the years, you can see from, I mean, don't go into the figure of this slide, but you can see from 1987 to 2015, there has been a sea change in the sensor, in the spatial resolution, and in the scale of interpretation. So technology, I just wanted to focus on the advancement of technology over the years in every sphere, in every um, organization, or uh, with today in the morning also we've heard a lot of speakers from different uh, industries. So FSI has also been, you know, upgrading its technological know-how over the years, from 1987 to 2015. We've also been using a lot of uh, uh, instruments, measurement things, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the satellite images, etc. So there has been a gradual change in technology, and with that, we've been able to interpret the forest cover more precisely. The, uh, as I've said, this is the... Um, this shows you the India State of Forest Report 2015. We give national state level forest cover. We give district wise forest cover. We give a change matrix also, district wise, which has changed compared to the last assessment. Mangrove, specifically, we do give because it's a very fragile ecosystem. We give forest cover in hill and tribal districts, and especially there's a lot of focus on the northeastern states with the government of India. So we also give special emphasis on the forest cover in the northeastern states. Just to show you the forest cover assessment of India, and since the headquarters is at Dehradun, so I just wanted to show you a classified forest cover map of Uttarakhand. This uh, shows you the change, uh, uh, you know, when it also helps you in a lot of decision making. Uh, there are positive changes, there are negative changes in the field. And uh, when you add and subtract, you get the net change in a particular area. Okay. Now the positive changes, you can see there are areas in the State of Forest Report 2013, the same area in 2015, you can see those areas which are reddish. That means there has been a vegetation uh, growth out there. So there is actually a photograph showing bamboo and other miscellaneous species which have come up in this area. So it is termed as a positive change. Similarly, there may be negative changes also. There may be a lot of reasons for negative changes. It's not only illicit filling, but there may be a dam coming up. There may be a road constructed. There may be so many other things by which forest areas have submerged and uh, have come under submergence. This picture clearly uh, shows uh, the negative change in, uh, in Maharashtra, where they, uh, after a, a dam has been constructed, a lot of area under forest cover has submerged. So this gives you a negative change. Inventory, as I mentioned, uh, is again you know, the backbone of uh, our organization, because through inventory, we get the primary data. People actually, we have a large number of crews. The zonal offices, which I have just mentioned uh, all over India, we have four zonal offices. There we have our field parties. We, it's headed by a uh, regional director level officer, and <clears throat> they, he has a team of other uh, scientific uh, personnel who actually go into the field to do the ground uh, inventory. So it is through the inventory that you come to know about the volume of your uh, of the forest resources both within and outside the forest so you come to know the species you come to know about the uh, the diameter class wise distribution you come to know about uh, the volume estimated volume the biomass which is uh, present in now the inventory of course as i as if i have divided this into three you know parts from 65 to 81 where uh, before the formation of Forest of India, it was PISFR. That time the inventory was primarily confined to areas uh, where the government wanted to establish the wood based industry. So, you know, this team used to visit, they used to do the assessment and tell, yes, there's enough amount of trees available for which you can actually cut, and this amount of raw material would be available for uh, establishment of a wood based industry. At that time, there was a lot of focus on wood based industries. But these were you know, primarily in particular areas. Then from 1981 to 2001, again, you know, the, though FSI, the Forest Service of India was created, but uh, the inventory was again still confined to, you know, patches, wherever there was a demand from a particular state forest department or a state 
uh, department that yes, you need to carry out inventory of Uttar Pradesh. So we did carry out the inventory of Uttar Pradesh, carry out the inventory of uh, Punjab. So you know, people went out there. So at no point of time, a national level estimate was available. And this changed in 2001-2 from onwards, where we developed a new methodology. We divided the country into 14 physiographic zones, and we started taking up 60 districts on a two-year cycle, spread across the zone, uh, across all the zones in such a manner that you do the complete inventory in those districts, both within and outside the forest, and uh, sort of extrapolate the data into the physiographic zone level, and then at the national level. Now, this was done in a cycle of two years. After that, you add another 60 districts, and then you go on adding another 60 districts. So your results became more robust as each cycle passed. But we will be able to uh, you know, present uh, national level estimates and also state level estimates at, fairly, at fair level of accuracy. And, uh, but of late, we have also thought, but this, you know, this, uh, the process from 2002 to 2015, the entire country, because we have about 600 odd districts, 603, 4 districts, now, <clears throat> the whole country would be completely invented eat in a cycle of 20 years, because 66 in two years are taking. So the entire cycle of inventory for the country would take 20 years, which is a huge time. Now, the information need is, you know, is, is you know, with, with today we're talking of digital India, we need information at a much faster, much rapid rate. So we have changed the inventory design in such a way now that uh, we have reduced the time of revisit from the existing 20 years to five years. And instead of taking uh, the districts as a base of inventory, we have divided the country into more than 171,000 grids, okay, of five square kilometer, okay. So once uh, we have divided the country into five by five kilometer grids, and in each, uh, uh, the, the sampling is done as far as, you know, the, we have Indian Statistical Service Officers also working in the organization. And uh, <coughs> this is the way they have uh, sort of uh, worked out that all, in the first year, all the number one grids, you just put one, two, three, four, five in this manner, will be inventoried. In the second year, all the threes. In the third year, all the f five number grids. Fourth year, all the twos. Fifth year, all the fours. And then in the sixth year, you come back to one. In this way, the inventory level of precision has also gone up, and the time period for conducting the inventory has also reduced from 20 years to five years. So we've just started this, but it has increased our workload. So now we actually do around 7,000 forested grids per year, and about 10,000 trees outside forest grids. So 17,000 grids we are visiting, our team is visiting every year which used to be done twice uh, in two years. So the level of um, work it has gone up, but we believe that this uh, would be uh, much uh, faster, obviously, and much more precise. I don't want to go into uh, details of you know, how the cluster plots are laid down in the intersection of each grid. It's a cluster grid. But we've also, you know, earlier, we were only talking of trees, primarily. Uh, we looked at trees at the top and also the, uh, the lower portion to look at the biomass, to look at the volume, look at the, you know, uh, to estimate uh, the volume, etc. But we are now also looking at availability of water because, you know, climate change, all of you have heard of, you know about climate change and the focus of the ministry on climate change. So we should, our people are visiting these grids. We're looking at availability of water in that area of, say, two hectares where they are going. And whence they'll again visit and see if that water source is there. So available water, invasive species, very big uh, problem in our uh, management. The non-timber forest produce, what are present out there, incidence of diseases. Uh, we are also looking at dead standing trees. So there's a lot of other parameters which has come into the new forest inventory design, which we are now adding for making the biomass estimation more precise. This I have already mentioned that the outcomes obviously is to estimate the growing stock, that is the stem volume, inside and outside forest area, estimate biomass and carbon stock in forest, and uh, growth and productivity, etc. Also, we look at bamboo, we look at regeneration, we look at grazing, we look at fire incidences, etc. Uh, coming to forest fire assessment, this is another major task which we carry out, again, by using a lot of special technology both um, from space ap applications and also uh, followed by a lot of ground truthing because, you know, we always say that 
even Mr. Mina was saying that it's all right, you have a lot of modern technologies, I agree with him, but you have to go to the ground. There are certain areas where you, if you don't go to the ground, the mismatch will always be there. It is there with land records, it is there with forest records, he knows it. So <clears throat> he's worked as a collector, I've worked as a DFO, we know all these problems. So uh, this, this is a problem which is there, you have to go to the field and actually, now otherwise you'll always end up with that 8 and, 10, 8 and 12 decibel, the story which he was saying. So it's absolutely correct. So uh, the same thing is there in the forest also, uh, you will find that there have been encroachments, especially forest bordering big cities, uh, but there has been a lot of pressure on the land. The land is always a uh, very, very precious commodity, so there has been a lot of encroachment. And as he has mentioned, I agree with him, government lands are the first to be encroached. First to be encroached. So it's always there. And forest is also a government land. So um, uh, my condition of saying that was, you know, you have to go to the field. You have to walk uh, and uh, see to it that uh, the, there is no mismatch because all the applications which you have all the uh, tools which you have, modern tools which you have, can only assist you to some extent. It speeds up your work, no doubt about it. Different applications can help you take decisions faster, there's no doubt about it. But actually to you know, synthesize the work in a proper manner between what is there in the ground and what you see, you need to walk, you need to actually see. You know, there's a story of a forester, he was, uh, to, he was uh, he was in an accident, and uh, once he came out of his uh, of uh, of his uh, consciousness, when he got conscious, the first thing asked, "Are my legs all right?" So, in more than his brain, his legs has to be all right. He has to go to the field. So that's what I wanted to just say out here. Now, uh, we have been doing forest mo uh, fire monitoring since 2004 onwards, but again, I, I, I again focus on the change in application of technology. Now, we have been capturing the data from the MODIS satellite, and uh, at that time, we used to get data once a day, okay? And uh, we used to just uh, send the SMSs to the State Forest Department, tell them, look, there is a fire out here. So you please send your people, okay? Now, the technology has evolved over the years. Now, we are getting real-time data. That time, it was near real-time, so there was a gap. But today, it's real-time Every six hours, there is a pass. And we are process, processing the data within just an hour. And within an hour, it is not only to the PCCF's office and the state headquarters, but all to all registered uh, users. Maybe he's a range officer or a divisional forest officer, a conservator of forest. If they have registered with, our, uh, with us and in our website, they immediately get a signal that this there is a fire out here. So the technology has changed. We are also now moving into you know, pre-warning uh, pre system. That's also very important because fire is fine, you're giving an alert, but by the time you give the alert, even though it is very precise now, within an hour, we're telling them, but the field parties may, you know, by the time they reach it, maybe three or four hours, five hours down the line, it always happens because there are very inaccessible areas in forest, uh, and uh, maybe the fire would have spread more. So uh, we're also trying to develop a pre-warning alert system based on whatever data we have, uh, 12 years data, based on the IMD data, the forest type. We have a lot of you know, GIS layers with us, a lot of information on the basis. We have forest cover, we have forest type, we have the IMD data on rainfall temperature. We have our own past forest fire incidences data. So building up models out here to you know, do a fire zonation uh, sort of uh, map and tell that these are the areas which are more prone to fire, so you should be more alert. We have a dedicated forest fire cell, and we also have an interactive portal for displaying all the forest fire hotspots. This is how we do it, I don't want to go into details, but basically again, we uh, get the signals from the earth station which is at uh, NRSC, Hyderabad, and it's transmitted to Forest of India, but they give all the hotspots in that particular uh, time of the day. So it's six times to get the, uh, four times to get the pass, so give us the hotspots, but then we do a processing. We overlay it on our forest cover, okay? Because we are only interested in the fire which is occurring in the forest. There may be fires outside the forest areas also, so we're not bothered about that. We, as a department, we give the information about forest fires to the forest department. So we do, all the fire spots are overlaid on the forest cover map. 
with precise lat long, etc., district boundaries overlaid on it, and then it is disseminated to the um, uh, field offices. All this is done automatically. There is no manual uh, thing. Everything is now automated, and you know, uh, in the back, back end, it's with the cable file. You have even the Google Maps also, so they get a precise uh, a, 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 um, figure like this. You can have uh, the dis district, the survey window turbo sheet number. We give them the start time of the fire, the when the fire has also been doused, if, if it's like that. The lat long, everything is given to them, and they can easily go and see the state of the fire. We are also into we are also into burnt area assessment now. Once the fire has taken place, one is giving the alerts of fire. The other thing is telling beforehand that there's a likelihood of these places to catch fire. And the other thing is once the fire has taken place, if there is a major damage out there, then the burnt area assessment. You know, we through the AWIPS uh, data, advanced wide uh, uh, sensor uh, data from uh, from uh, NRSC, we do a lot of uh, uh, sort of uh, work in our lab and we try to find out the areas which are burned so that also is one of the areas I just want to show you that you know how the technology also helps in monitoring of uh, encroachment in forest areas so this is a very old uh, example but I still would like to show it this is an island in Sundarban in, uh, as seen in 1989 and as you can see out here the red portion obviously means there's a lot of vegetation, red depicts vegetation, okay? And if you can see that this area was actually getting uh, encroached. As you can see out here, it's getting encroached. Uh, 1994, it's, you can see in nine, this is about 2000 when it is getting uh, encroached further. <clears throat> and um, the forest department came in and they evicted the people. They said, you're encroaching on this uh, in, uh, very biodiverse biodiversity rich island there was a lot of political hue and cry and uh, the case went up to the calcutta high court and uh, they said that the, obviously the villagers said no they, we have not encroached we were here from since long this is a common thing which they always say so at that time only the uh, the high court was shown I mean, uh, the images uh, and then they said that look in 1989, it was a completely forest area. 1994, they started encroaching. 2000, it is more. 2004, it is even more. So when the High Court got convinced, the, the, the forest department was the right thing, so you move on. What I'm trying to tell you out here is the application of the technology again. I mean, in taking decision, objective decisions out here. And then the forest area, of course, in 2001, they were cleared. And then uh, slowly, slowly, this area started being filled up. Again, it's, it's greening out here. It's filling up. Once the intruders were removed, the area was again greened up. So, technological use. We've developed <coughs> some, uh, something known as an e-green watch web-based monitoring system. Um, another application of you know, technology uh, using remote sensing, GIS. Then the uh, compensatory afforestation bill, which has recently been passed. Uh, there are a lot of works you know, being undertaken in the state forest departments, uh, especially uh, when there is land diverted for non forestry purpose, so that area is supposed to be again reforested or afforested. So, but we should have a system of monitoring those program. So, the ministry, uh, the FS Forest of India, and the ministry has actually, along with NIC, has developed this e Green Watch portal, which is capable of showing the compensatory afforestation, the lands which are diverted the plantations which are coming up, you know, other plantations are there, and uh, it helps in temporal change detection for proper online monitoring. So you can see today that, okay, this land has been diverted. After six months, you see this land, or the pits have been dug for plantation. After another six months, you see, yes, plants have been planted. So you go back after a year and see, yes, you have one-year-old plants. You can go back and see, and then you see after two years, after three years, the growth of the plantation. So it's an online monitoring system uh, which has started, it started in 2012 in five states, but now it has moved to 27 states. This is the web page which is there in our, uh, in our website. You can check it also. And we are trying to, of course, there are problems uh, which in the state, as uh, Mr. Mina was also mentioning, there are problems, you know, how to change the attitude of the people. It's, technology is there, but the person using the technology needs to be adequately educated. It's, it's a difficult situation in government, so I agree with him because I, from the government I know how difficult it is to make people understand 
how to use technology. So we have a constant program of you know, capacity building, keeping people abreast of the latest in technology. But you have to go to the field. You have to you know, create a shape file, draw a polygon, upload it. Like this is the area where plantation or the land has been diverted. This is the area where there is plantation has taken place. You have to upload it into the portal so that we can monitor. If it is wrongly done, you won't get anything. You know, in, in GIS, we say you put garbage, you'll get garbage. You put, you put the right thing, you, you can have effective decisions. So, you know, to put the right thing, you have to keep on constantly, you know, building up the capacity of the, of the lower level people. It's very, very important and it's a very difficult task. And uh, the government of India, along with the state governments, are trying very hard, actually, to build up this capability. And over the years, you see, Things have improved. I, I'm from Madhya Pradesh, Karar. I'll tell you, when the World Bank project came in 1995, computerization, computer came into the forest department, any other, other departments, all the people were very apprehensive. But as how to pehle wala khat -pat, khat -pat hai. You know, typewriters. So they were, very, they were very apprehensive. But today, you ask the same persons, they said, Sir, what are typewriters? Sir, we can't live without it. You know, that sort of a thing. So change takes time, change will, change happens, but the government sector is a mammoth, uh, the bureaucracy is in India is huge, it, it's, and so many people out there. So it takes time to change, you know, the mindset of people to get it, but then there has been a lot of work in the government sector, as Mr. Mina was showing, you know, uh, digitization of all the cadastral maps all over India is not a joke here. It's not a joke. Similarly, what <coughs> we've been doing out here, it's, it's a lot of uh, you know, work which we have put in, and there have been improvement over the years. I'll just show you out here. This is uh, because we've put it under uh, you know, at the background of Google Map, of course. You can also use very high resolution data and put it in the background. Check, of course, but they're costly affairs. Google is free, so you can always use it. This is a pre-planting operation, as you can see out here, and it's 2011-12. I have to finish? <laughs> You've not given me much time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just run through it. Sorry. Sorry. And you can see out here, and it's not very really clear, but you, uh, there are some pre planting oper um, uh, operations, and there you can see some plantation has come up. This is how you monitor. Okay. There are areas which you see this area was actually diverted, and instead of planting, buildings have come up. So you can also check. This is also divert the plantation, you have building. So, you know, these are all monitoring systems. So since my time is very short, so I'll have to run through. Another uh, operation which we have uh, made was a decision support system. It's a web-based application which provides information with reference to georeference area as it's basically developed to facilitate informed, unbiased and expeditious decisions on management of forest in general, in general and implementation of the Forest Conservation Act. You know, in Forest Conservation Act, it's a very stringent act. You sh must have, uh, you should know which of the area to be diverted, whether this area can be diverted or not, whether the area is dense forest, very dense forest, what is the biomass out there. So we have developed a web-based system. We have put in so many layers, forest cover maps, forest type map, the biological richness, which we have got from Indian Civil Remote Sensing, landscape integrity, hydrological layer, which we got from Central Water Commission, protected area network from the Wildlife Institute. Just to show you that so many layers are there, and then you, you know, overlay it and put it and take an informed decision as to whether this area is fit for, uh, uh, for diversion or not. So I, I won't go into details because she's just looking at me. Uh, we've also now moving into very high resolution data. I mean, Mr. Min was also, I've just been seen in one of his slides, they are also the uh, Department of Land Resources also would look into high resolution data. We are also looking at high resolution data. This is, of course, very high resolution data, submit accuracy. And uh, we've already established a lab, lab and we're trying to uh, look into the, its applications. The applications are, are huge. For us, of course, from plantation monitoring to soil moisture conservation monitoring, asset monitoring, better visualization, ground truthing. I mean, you, there's a lot of uh, application which you can use. There's a lot of um, uh, benefits from the high resolution data. And uh, hopefully that uh, in the near future we'll be using it more. This is just to show you that, you know, uh, high resolution data in forest resource assessment. This is a plantation uh, which I show. I've just finished in Tripura in 2013. This is 2014. This is contour trenches you can see through the high resolution data. So it's very good for visualization. This is the Forest Research Institute building 
in Dehradun, which you can see from the World View 2 uh, image. Uh, there are openings which you can see in forest. You can easily see that there is encroachment or something has happened. So a lot of things. This is rural trees outside forests because, you know, when you look at biomass, we look at biomass within and outside forests. So we've looked at rural trees outside forests also. You can check out uh, agroforestry mapping, urban tree mapping. You know, trees are there even in urban. In Delhi, you have so much amount of plantations. So even for that can be used and so on and so forth. And also for identifying fire burnt areas. So uh, I'll just uh, end by, you know, there are many issues, of course, which uh, we all know. We have to appreciate the technology in full. We still don't have a very dedicated skilled human resource uh, to use the technology. There are mismatches, which uh, Mr. Mina was also mentioning. And uh, the technology obviously needs to be made cheaper, and we need to have more standards and protocols which are interoperable with all. So this I'll end. I've taken half an hour. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I can take it now, or we can take it afterwards, because I think Time is less, so it's up to you. Forest yeah. Forest area, the forest cover has been increasing. If you compare with the last uh, uh, State of Forest Report of 2013, there has been an increase of 3,775 square kilometers in the country. Our country, I can also tell you that India being, though India is a very populous country, you know, 2% of geographical area, 17% of the world's population, we still maintain 24.5% of forest and tree cover, which is very significant. And it is globally 10th in the list, which is, again, you know, it is really uh, praiseworthy. Thank you.